Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Poetry. I'm Lori and I am the librarian at Manlius Library and today I'm going to be reading to you from Favorite Poems of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He's well known for poems, epic poems such as the Song of Hiawatha and the Saga of King Olaf and I won't be reading any of those today, The Courtship of Miles Standish and Paul Revere's Ride. I won't be reading those today because they're very long. I recommend them. But today I'm gonna to read some of his shorter poetry. And I'm gonna start with, The Tide Rises, The Tide Falls. The tide rises, the tide falls, the twilight darkens, the curfew calls. Along the sea sands, damp and brown, the traveler hastens toward the town. And the tide rises, the tide falls. Darkness settles on roof, roofs and walls, but the sea, the sea in the darkness calls. The little waves with their soft white hands efface the footprints in the sands. And the tide rises, the tide falls. The morning breaks, the steeds in their stalls stamp and neigh as the hostler calls. The day returns, but nevermore returns the traveler to the shore. And the tide rises, the tide falls. Next one I'm going to read to you is called The Children's Hour. Between the dark and the daylight, when the night is beginning to lower, comes a pause in the day's occupations that is known as the children's hour. I hear in the chamber above me the patter of little feet, the sound of a door that is opened, the voices soft and sweet. From my study I see in the lamplight, descending the broad hall stair, grave Alice and laughing Allegra and Edith with the golden hair. A whisper and then a silence, yet I know by their merry eyes they are plotting and planning together to take me by surprise. A sudden rush from the stairway, a sudden raid from the hall. By three doors left unguarded, they enter my castle wall. They climb up into my turret or the arms and back of my chair. If I try to escape, they surround me. They seem to be everywhere. They almost devour me with kisses their arms about me entwine, till I think of the Bishop of Bingen in his mouse tower on the Rhine. Do you think, O oh blue-eyed banditti, because you have scaled the wall, such an old mustache as I am is not a match for you all? I have you fast in my fortress and will not let you depart, but put you down in the dungeon in the round tower of my heart. And there I will keep you forever, yes, forever and a day, till the walls shall crumble to ruin and molder in dust away. And that's the children's hour. The next one is just called Song. Stay, stay at home, my heart and rest. Homekeeping hearts are happiest. For those that wander, they know not where, are full of trouble and full of care. To stay at home is best. Weary and homesick and distressed, they wander east, they wander west, and are baffled and beaten and blown about by the winds and the wilderness of doubt. To stay at home is best. Then stay at home, my heart, and rest. Thy bird is safest in its nest. Or all that flutter their wings and fly, a hawk is hovering in the sky. To stay at home is best. And that's song. The next one is called Excelsior. The shades of night were falling fast as through an alpine village passed a youth who bore mid snow and ice a banner with a strange device, Excelsior. His brow was sad, his eye beneath flashed like a falchion from its sheath and like a silver clarion rung the accents of that unknown tongue, Excelsior. In happy homes he saw the light of household fires gleam warm and bright. Above the spectral glacier shone, and from his lips escaped a groan, Excelsior. 
Try not the pass, the old man said. Dark lowers the tempest overhead. The roaring torrent is deep and wide, and loud that clarion voice replied, Excelsior. Oh, stay, the maiden said, and rest thy weary head upon this breast. A tear stood in his bright blue eye, but still he answered with a sigh, Excelsior. Beware the pine tree's withered branch, beware the awful avalanche. This was the peasant's last good night. A voice replied far up the height, Excelsior. At break of day, as heaven ward, the pious monks of St. Bernard uttered the oft-repeated prayer, a voice cried through the startled air, Excelsior. A traveler by the faithful hound, half buried in the snow was found, still grasping in his hands of ice that banner with the strange device, Excelsior. There in the twilight, cold and gray, lifeless but beautiful he lay, and from the sky, serene and far, a voice fell like a falling star, Excelsior. And that's Excelsior. And finally, I'm going to read The Bridge. I stood on the bridge at midnight as the clocks were striking the hour, and the moon rose o'er the city behind the dark church tower. I saw her bright reflection in the waters under me, like a golden goblet falling and sinking into the sea. And far in the hazy distance of that lovely night in June, the blaze of the flaming furnace gleamed redder than the moon. Among the long black rafters, the wavering shadows lay, and the current that came from the ocean seemed to lift and bear them away. As sweeping and eddying through them rose the belated tide, and streaming into the moonlight, the seaweed floated wide. And like those waters rushing among the wooden piers, a flood of thoughts came o'er me that filled my eyes with tears. How often, oh, how often in the days that had gone by, I had stood on that bridge at midnight and gazed on that wave and sky. How often, oh, how often I'd wished that ebbing tide would bear me away on its bosom or the ocean wild and wide. For my heart was hot and restless, and my life was full of care, and the burden laid upon me seemed greater than I could bear. But now it has fallen from me, it is buried in the sea, and only the sorrow of others throw it, throws its shadow over me. Yet whatever I cross the river on its bridge with wooden piers, like the odor of brine from the ocean comes the thought of other years. And I think how many thousands of care-encumbered men each bearing his burden of sorrow, have crossed the bridge since then. I see the long procession still passing to and fro, the young heart hot and restless and the old subdued and slow. And forever and forever, as long as the river flows, as long as the heart has passion, as long as life has woes, the moon and its broken reflection and its shadows shall appear as the symbol of love in heaven and its wavering image here. And that is favorite poems of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And this is a book from our collection here at Manlius Library. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed today's edition of Lunchtime Poetry. My name is Lori and I'm a librarian here at Manlius Library. If you are a teen, in Central New York and you're signed up for the Manlius Teen Summer Reading Program, your secret code today is SUMMER, capital S-U-M-M-E-R, SUMMER. Head on over to your account and click on the Lunchtime Poetry Mission and enter that code for today's activity, to complete today's activity for your summer reading points. And I hope that I will see you next week. Thank you for joining me. Have a great weekend. Happy poetry.